beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> and I wonder if we would stand this afternoon in honor of the reading of God's Word. Amen. Genesis 39, beginning at verse 1. The Word of the Lord reads in this fashion, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him an overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. This will seem like an unusual text this afternoon, but I hope that uh, we bring it around before all is said and done, and you'll understand the message that God has laid upon my heart for this hour. I want to speak to us this afternoon, all spare. All is fair. Would you bow your heads with me? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus, we thank you, God, for the lovely, sweet anointing and presence that we have felt in this place thus far today. And, Lord, we're so grateful that you honor those who come, those who make the effort, those who strive to serve you, to love you, to worship you. And, Lord, that those who uh, haven't made that effort and those who haven't been able to uh, get into the house of worship for uh, this time. Lord, you don't withhold from us for their sake, but rather you send your blessing and your presence anyway. Amen. So that those of us who are present might experience your joys and the great blessing that you would pour out upon us. Master, today the Word of God is so important to us. We need to hear from you. We need the anointing. We need the power of God. Lord, we don't need opinions. We don't need doctrine and dogma that are man-made and concocted in the minds of religious uh, theologians and those who think they know you, but they know more about law than they do about grace. Lord, this hour we need so greatly to hear a word from you, for we are your people. We're hungry. We need to be encouraged. We need to be fed. We need to be lifted up. Master, today, anoint your word. Help me to bring forth the message that you've laid upon my heart this hour. God, that it might be a help and an encouragement and strength to the hearer. For we ask it in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated. This is going to be this afternoon also something like last week, a fairly concise and brief, uh, simple word of exhortation. God has laid something on my heart. You know, life is not always fair. Amen. Life doesn't always treat people the way it ought to treat people. We see people sometimes who are so sweet and so lovely and so giving and so caring, and uh, Christian people even who are so spiritual and, you know, so committed and so godly. And yet it seems that if anyone is dealt the, the tough blow, if anybody is dealt a, a really horrible hand, a lot of times it's those people. It's the best people get the worst out of life. Amen? Sometimes it seems like that the most wonderful people are the very ones who get the least out of life. Amen. And those who are miserable, wretched, and are willing to step on anybody to get where they're going, they seem, it appears, to get all that there is. Amen. And my friend, I'm here to tell you that in reality, uh, life is not fair. Life will never be fair. There will always be, be disparity. Uh, things will not always work the way that they might seem uh, they ought to. That's a sad reality. God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said in his ministry here on earth, for instance, the poor you will have with you always. My Lord. You know, there are so many that are running around, and, and some of us and some 
uh, refer to these folks as bleeding heart liberals, you know, who think that uh, government can answer all the woes of humanity and that we can solve all the problems for everybody. And, and now I certainly agree with my brother here. We want to help everybody that we can help locally. Amen. That, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying, you know, at a federal level, everybody, you know, should be fed and clothed and taken care of and medical insurance and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we shouldn't have poor people in this country. But you see, the sad reality is there will always be poor people simply because life, listen to me, is not always fair. Amen. You know, you can take Donald Trump with all his millions and all it takes is a bolt of lightning or a, or a lit cigarette dropped in a sofa, and it can burn up all that he owns. Hello now. Amen. There's nobody that's got uh, everything that they're able to keep without question, without concern. No. Everything you've got. I thought, I think about that uh, Jewish gentleman who used to, I believe he had founded HSBC, was it? The bank, the New York bank. And uh, used to be called Republic, actually, and they merged with HSBC. I know because it's my bank. And uh, he had founded Republic Bank, and he was a multi, multi-billionaire, they said. And yet he was in his apartment there in uh, Morocco, I believe it was. He and, and a, a nurse, a caregiver, whatever the case might be, and uh, the apartment caught fire. Well, that man's dead today. All his billions are still here. His wife's enjoying them, I'm sure. But that man is gone. He, he can't enjoy those. You see, my friend, it's not a thing in the world that we have that can't be lost in some form or fashion. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? And it's sad when we think we've got everything. You know, it's like the Scripture said, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And we realize uh, we come to this, we, we get under this impression that we don't need anything. You know, we, we can keep everything we've got, so as long as we've got everything we've got. But, sweetheart, what you've got can be lost so quickly because life isn't fair. The strangest things happen. The most unusual things happen in the most unusual circumstances. We read about Joseph this morning in Genesis 39. If there was any man in all of the Bible who experienced some of the most hideous turns of fate, it was Joseph. Joseph was probably the most promising of all of uh, the sons of Jacob. He was the uh, he was the one that was constantly plagued by these dreams of grandeur and these visions of accomplishment and achievement. And when he would share these visions and dreams with his brothers, they of course became very upset. You know, it's interesting how that everybody wants to be successful, but in this world a lot of people aren't interested in whether you're successful or not. Hello now. I'm so worried about my success, I don't want to hear about yours. I'm so concerned about my dream, I don't want to hear about yours. Hello now. Oh, friend, I wish people would understand that in the church of God, the Bible said we're a body. We are the body of Christ. We operate and function as a body. The scripture says when one rejoices, what? We all rejoice. When one mourns, we all mourn. If you've got a vision and a dream and a goal, I'm for you. Go for it. Amen. I'm behind you. Let's see it happen. Let's make it a reality. Let's help one another. Hello now. Amen. That's the way God's church is supposed to operate. There's not supposed to be infighting. There's not supposed to be bickering. There's not supposed to be backbiting. There's not supposed to be a lack of concern because it's not my issue. Hello, my Lord. But this was what Joseph was experiencing from within his own family. So you see, the likeness to the church is very real because the church, as the church, we are family. So we call each other brother and sister. Amen. We are family. And it's sad that in the family of God, my vision isn't important to this one over here, or this one over here. Hello. Amen. And their vision and their dream isn't important to me, but it is important to me. Amen. I've had people tell me, oh, Brother Morrow, I, I dream of the day when I can do this, and, and I want to be able to do this and this and this. And, and I know in the back of my mind there's this little, you know, reality demon that says to me, now you know she's never going to be able to do that. 
Don't you want to know something? I don't care what the reality demon is saying, because what I'm saying to her is, well, sister, if that's, what, if that's what you want to do, God bless you, go for it. How can I help you? Is there anything I can do? Come on now. Somebody said, why would I help them? They're just going to fail. I'll tell you why. Because when they have failed and they need to get up, they're going to come to me because I helped them get down. Hello. Amen. You know why so many people leave the church and, and lose out with God? Tell you why. Because the church doesn't get behind them when they're trying to do something, and then when they do fail and falter, they're embarrassed and humiliated, and they don't want to stand in front of God's people. And it's a shame. Because God's people should have been there right with them saying, you know what, we're taking the risk with you. Don't you worry about it. If this, you know, if this thing fails, we've all failed. Hello. If one fails, we all fail. If one succeeds, we all succeed. That ought to be the mindset. It's not, but it ought to be. Joseph, his brothers were so envious of him and so hateful, and they so disliked him and his vision and the idea that he would one day be much greater than they and that they would be subservient to him. They couldn't understand why he would share this dream with them and uh, over and over again. And yet, my friend, it turned out in the long run, of course, to become a, a very real reality. But Joseph, a young man, he was loved by his dad. And he was taken by his brothers and cast into a ditch and later sold into slavery. My Lord, what a horrific twist of fate. What a terrible thing to happen. Isn't that awful, Harry? Think about it. Oh, man, just, you know, to be taken by your own brothers and sold into slavery. Life isn't always fair. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. But the Lord has spoken to me and said, I just want you to tell my people today, all fair. Oh, sir, what does that mean? It means simply this. No matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, no matter what you experience, God wants you to know that he's a fair God. And before it's all said and done, it is going to turn around and come around for your benefit, and it is going to be a blessing to you and not a curse. He says, I want you to teach him to take every circumstance and every situation and accept it as my divine providence. Hello now. Accept it as my will for their life. When the devil comes knocking on your door with a package, you ought to be every bit as excited to sign for it as when an angel comes. Hello now. When the devil comes with his curse and he wants to bring something miserable into your life, thank God for it, because the promise of God's Word is all things work together for good to them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. So when Satan comes to you and he thinks he's got this great big curse, what he doesn't realize is God has promised in his Word that he will turn every curse into a blessing. So bring it on, devil. I need all the blessing I can get. Hallelujah. I recognize when, when the devil's UPS man is at my door, I recognize that a blessing is not too far behind because my God is a God who takes curses and causes them to become blessing. Hello now. Amen. Isn't that exciting news? Brother, I don't understand. My car just pooped out, and I need a car so bad, and I can't be without a car. And then all of a sudden, a week later, they come. Well, you know, when my car pooped out the way that it did, my mother decided that instead of waiting uh, for my inheritance, that she'd buy me a new car now while she could see me enjoy it. Come on now. Amen. God took it first and turned it in, into a blessing. Sometimes we need to learn when these things happen, instead of moaning and groaning, Lord, it's not fair. God's saying, all's fair, all's fair. Come on now, all's fair. Don't you tell me it's not fair. Before it's all said and done, honey, it'll be fair. God will never treat you unfairly. Hello now. And he will never allow the enemy to treat you unfairly. Glory to God. He said, no, you let them know, all's fair. It doesn't matter who's carrying the package. Before it's all said and done, there's going to be a blessing in the box and not a bomb. Hello. Amen. Praise God and amen. Life isn't always fair. But every circumstance, every situation is recognized by God's people as God's divine providence. God is at work. God is doing something. 
I don't know why my house burned down, but God must be doing something. Hello now. I don't know why my partner left me, but God must be doing something. I don't know why my child's gone off on drugs, but God must be doing something. Hallelujah. I don't know why my car comes out, but God must be doing something. Oh, if God's people could only learn to accept every single cursed thing as a potential blessing from heaven, my friend, then suddenly our eyes will be open and we will begin to see the world in an entirely different way. And instead of saying, life is not fair, we'll be running around saying, all's fair. Amen. All's fair. All's well. Oh, everything's fine. How are you? You ever meet somebody? How are you? Well, my, my right toes been aching me quite a bit and my left foot and well, my back, you know, and, and they got all kinds of grief and woe that they tell you about. <laughs> used to be a little sister down in Texas in the church there. Bless her little heart. When you asked her, how are you? She thought she really wanted to know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, you know, generally speaking, that's a rhetorical greeting. You know, how are you? You know, I really don't want to know. Just how are you? <laughs> and you in turn say, I'm fine. Right? That's how it works, you know. Well, no, not Sister Evelyn. And Dorothy, if you ever hear this tape, don't you dare ever say I said this. And, and oh, Sister Evelyn, bless her heart. Well, you know, my pinky's been aching, and my cat has diarrhea, and, well, you know, my husband, blah, 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 and this is that. And, boy, you get the whole one down. The longer you stood there, the more you heard. Sometimes you're the one that had to fake diarrhea, just so you could get out of the situation and not have to listen to the whole story. But you know what? As a child of God, full of faith, knowing God, taking Him in His Word, embracing His promise, we ought to be able to go through life and when someone says, so how's life treating you? Oh, it's there. Amen. I'm being treated fairly at every level. All the way across the board, everything is fair, and that's on the truth. My God, I remember a little lady who ran to the prophet out in the field of sunlight dead at home. Whoo, I'm going to shout, amen. And he run, she ran out there to the prophet, and he said, what's going on? How is everything? And what was her answer? Did she respond like so many of us might? You know, if we're in one of those faithless kind of depressed mindsets, what am I so I don't understand. God gave him to me. He was, a, he was a child of promise. He was an answer to prayer. He was a miracle baby. And God took him from him. No. That little lady understood. You know what? God's going to treat me right. God's going to treat me fairly. He's not going to take something. He's not going to give me something in one hand to take it out of the other. Hello now. Amen. The thing that cracks me up about Social Security, you get a notice in the mail sometimes, your Social Security disability has been increased by $20 a month. Then you get a notice in the mail the next day, your Social Security supplemental insurance has been decreased by $20 a month. So what they're giving you in one hand, hello now, they're taking out of the other. Is that fair? Not at all. And my friend, if you think that God's going to treat you that way, you're wrong. Because in God, all's fair. God says, he's a just God. I can give you in one hand, take it out of the other. Lady, you prayed for a child. This prophet blessed you and you were able to have a child. I'm not going to take that baby away from you. And she knew that. Hello, now. She knew it. She gets over to the prophet and says, Oh, I wonder if you'd like to come home with me. What's wrong? Something wrong? What's the problem? She said, oh, no, no. All's well. <laughs> All is well. Everything's fine. Hello, now. Isn't that what she said? And he, he had yelled out to her before she even got to him. Hey there, what, what's wrong? He saw her coming out to meet him in the field. He thought, well, surely something's wrong. Hey there, what's wrong? And what was her answer? All's well. I'll talk to you when I get there. Just wait a minute. I'm coming. Oh, children. If only today we could embrace faith to believe God for his promise so that we would be able to say in the face of the greatest adversity, all's fair, all's well. Amen. All is well. Joseph sold into slavery, and yet he changes hands yet once again from the Ishmaelites or the Arabs, and he's sold into Egyptian 
ownership, as it were. And there in Egyptian ownership, his master sees that this man has a different attitude. Something about this guy that's different. He, he doesn't think like everybody else thinks. Seems like no matter what comes his way, no matter what happens, his attitude is elsewhere. Somebody asks him, how's life treating you? And he just says, ah, all's fair. All in all, doing very well, thank you. So I like that guy. I like his attitude. Not only do I like his attitude, but his attitude really works for him. He, he seems to be quite blessed. You know why a lot of God's people aren't blessed? You know why they had not got nothing and, and they probably never will? Because of their attitude. Amen. Their attitude stinks. Hello. That's the fact. That, I just said it as plain as you can say it. Because their attitude simply stinks. And if they would learn to walk in faith instead of fear, if they would learn to act instead of react, they'd be able to recognize that no matter what circumstance comes, all's fair. God's going to treat me right in the end. Amen. And I'm going to rush ahead in the story so I can bring this to a swift conclusion today. I told you a very simple word of exhortation. Joseph winds up before it's all sin and done in such a powerful position in the kingdom of Egypt. And his family, living in a place of drought and famine, come seeking some assistance. And who do they wind up having to come to? But this handsome young man that they no longer recognize because they had sold him into slavery some time ago. And there stand his brothers seeking the assistance of this great Egyptian leader. And that great Egyptian leader is, in reality, their brother. Because God had turned the curse of slavery into a blessing. Joseph started out a slave and wound up a ruler. You hear what I'm saying today? We tell you, God can do it. I know my God can do it. Say, brother, I'm at the bottom of the heap. That's all right. You'll be at the top of the heap tomorrow. Hello. Amen. It doesn't matter where you start at today. It doesn't matter where you start at today. That doesn't mean you're going to be there tomorrow. Amen. God is able to take a little old boy like Joseph and make a ruler out of him in the kingdom of Israel. It wasn't even his own kingdom. He was a Jew. Amen. He was an Israelite. And yet here he is in Egypt, and he is ruler over so much. He's able to distribute goods wherever he will. Wherever he decides it goes, it goes. Amen. And here come those who have cursed him. Listen to me. And suddenly they're in a position where they need his blessing. I'm going to tell you, friend, all fair in God. God vindicates his people. That's one thing I appreciate. For if vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. So don't, don't take it into your own hands. Don't get too worried about it. He said, I'll take care of it. But, you know, a lot of us, when things happen and people do us dirty, a lot of times we, we want God to strike somebody dead, or we want God to run them over with a car, or we want God to, you know, hit them with a bus. We want something awful and evil to happen to them. But you know what God does instead? God will cause it to come to pass that one day the very ones who curse you and tried to be a curse in your life will stand before you in need of your blessing. And I tell the truth. That's what God will do. You want to talk about vindication. I've had this happen. I have. I've had this happen. You want to talk about feeling good. I couldn't have felt this good if a bus had hit him <laughs> or if lightning had struck him from heaven. Amen. But when the time comes that all of a sudden, humbled by circumstance and situation, they have to come before you and seek your blessing and your assistance. And as a child of God with the right spirit and the right attitude, you're in a place then to bless. Come on now. Instead of cursing. And you're able to forego the bitterness and the malice and say, you know, I, I'm in a perfect position right now where I could really be a problem for these people. But you know, as a child of God, as a representative of Jesus Christ, I'm going to bless them. They cursed me, but I'm going to bless them. Amen. Hello. And God, in turn, just going to bless you more. Because when you do right, God does right by you. 
Amen. Did you hear that today? I said, when you do that, God will do right by you. Say, folks, his life there, I don't know, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King, Jr., Malcolm X, JFK, his life there, I don't know. Seems like the, the rotten things happen to some awful good people, amen? That's not too fair at all. But my friend, I know this. I know that I have adopted a mindset, and I say, God, help me to continue to trust you and believe you and to have faith in you, to be able to say, all is fair. Whatever circumstance, whatever situation, God, all is fair. You've never failed to treat me fairly. You've never failed to treat me properly. Amen. The last example, and I'm closing. There can be no greater example. We can think of Abraham Lincoln and the great causes that he stood for and the wonderful things that he did. Martin Luther King Jr. as well. Even Malcolm X, actually. If you've ever studied Malcolm X and read about him, you realize that toward the end of his life he really had an epiphany and a turning around in a lot of his thinking about a lot of things. And he, he wanted to change the message of the nature of the message that he was preaching, and that's what a lot of people didn't want. They didn't want him to change the message. JFK, relative to civil rights movement, of course, President Johnson carried out a lot of JFK's later, um, carried out endeavors that JFK had initially uh, been involved in creating and implementing. But you know, for all these great men, there's no greater example of the inequity of life than Jesus Christ. The Bible said, He who knew no sin became sin. Now there. He who was holy became profane. He who was divine became murder. Doesn't sound very fair to me. Especially when you consider that he did all of this for his sake. Hello. Did he do all of that for his sake? No. He did all of that for my sake. He did all of that for your sake. Doesn't seem very fair to me. He traded in all the glory of divinity in heaven for all the struggle of humanity on earth. And he did all of that for you and I. Amen. No, it wasn't very fair. But you know what? God turned the blessing, the curse, right around into a blessing. And because he did what he did, I'm able to be here today. Amen. Because he was who he was, you're able to be here today. Thank God there's not a thing in this world that can come your way that God will not turn into a blessing if you'll just learn to live by faith and accept every circumstance as his providence. And let us learn to say, in response to the question, how's life treating you? All's fair. Amen? Praise God and amen. Would you stand with me?